Hey, it's Ryan here with another edition of Tips and Tricks for a Magician. Today is a tip, more than a trick. It is a tip for DVDs and your magic library. You may have seen in the past, I wrote about digitizing my magic library when I moved across the country. I couldn't carry two bookcases worth of stuff. And I'm back at it again because last night I went to a flea market swap meet and I picked up Barry Richardson's uh, uh, DVD set. Uh, among a couple other things. So I have to digitize these because uh, I don't want to keep the DVDs. I don't have a shelf to put them on right now. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do that, the program I use, the settings I use in order to make a digital copy of that DVD. So the program in question is called Handbrake. It's a free program. You can download it at handbrake.fr. I believe it's French, handbrake.fr. It's a free program, works on uh, Mac, works on Windows, works on Linux. So no matter what you got, you can use Handbrake. Get it, download it. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. This is Handbrake. Like most free programs, it's a little confusing, a little, uh, lot of, lots of options, not necessarily the clearest instructions. What it does is take video A, reconverts it into video B. In our case, video A is a DVD, and we want video B, which is a file on my computer, a digital video file. And there's a ton of different settings and different options to do this, but I'm gonna make it super simple for you. So, first we choose our source. Over here, open source, uh, and once you put the disk into your computer, which I have, it will open up your DVD drive and show the DVD. So you open that, it'll read it. Every DVD is a little bit different, so be aware of that. They have sometimes different sections, different chapters, can different configurations. In this case, it's nice and simple. There's only one section, it's two and a half hours long. There's only one angle, and there's chapters one through 14. I want the whole thing to become one video file, so I want the, it all selected. Two and a half hours. Got it. I want to make sure I am naming it something useful so I know what the video is, especially if you're doing all your DVDs. You don't want them all named the same thing. It does try and take the name from the DVD, but sometimes the DVDs are named weird things like uh, uh, DVD Burner is the title of the DVD <laughs> because of the way it was made. So sometimes you need to change that name. In this case, it's great, good to go. Under the container, technically this doesn't matter, but I would uh, suggest MP4 as your container. It just makes it a little more compatible with different players. Now, then there's all these settings underneath. Don't worry about them. You can get super nitty gritty in this program and change absolutely everything about this video. But as I said, I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna go to the presets just don't ask me any questions right now. Just trust me and pick Gmail large, three minutes, 720p30. It's under the web section. Gmail large, three minutes, 720p30. Pick that preset, trust me. When you have that preset checked, you've got your file named, you've got your chapter selected, start in code. I'm not gonna click it right now because I already did it. But when you start in code, it'll down here at the bottom, it'll show you work in progress. This will take anywhere from uh, usually 15 minutes to an hour or more, depending on your computer, depending on the DVD, depending on your file settings. So it's not a fast process, it takes time. Usually I do this uh, overnight. You can queue up a DVD uh, and you can even have it, uh, when done, shut down your computer if you, if you want. Not important. Point is, start the encode, wait. You come back and you get a couple video, or you get one video file. But I wanted to show you, just as an example, uh, I did this twice. I encoded one with that Gmail setting, and I encoded one with a higher quality setting. Because here's the thing, you need to choose your ratio and choose your trade-off. Higher quality video equals larger file. Smaller file, is a lower quality video. And you wanna find the balance that's right for you. For me, 
I'm less concerned about video quality because these are your instructional videos. As long as I can see what's going on and hear what's going on, I'm not worried about perfect picture quality. I am worried about file size. If I have hundreds of videos, I don't want the files to be out of control, big, huge files. So I prefer lower quality, low, smaller size. Your personal choice may vary. In this case, these are two different files. Uh, one is the Gmail 720 and one is uh, the 720 kind of high quality. So size wise, they're not much different. Visually, especially in this shrunken down size, they're indistinguishable. I don't even know which is which. Maybe if you're projecting them huge, you might start to notice some graininess on one or the other. But here's the thing. One of these files is twice as big as the other. One is uh, for the two and a half hour video, it's 1.3 gigabytes. And the other one is about half that, 800 megabytes. So again, this is why, just trust me on the Gmail large. I think it's the best setting. It's gonna give you that 800 megabytes for a very long video at good quality. You're very unlikely to notice any issues with this. So trust me on that. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the actual storage of your files. So when you have all these digital files, you need to put them somewhere on a hard drive. If you just have them on your computer hard drive, two things. One, if you have a lot of DVDs, you'll, you'll run out of storage. <laughs> these add up. I think I, right now I have about 250 gigabytes of, of video. And that's, uh, I don't even know how many DVDs at this point, but a lot. And uh, the other thing is, if you ever lose your hard drive due to a, a crash or some problem, I'd hate for you to lose all your magic videos because I know they're you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of uh, a learning investment in your, in your future. I'd hate for you to lose that. So I strongly encourage some sort of remote backup or cloud backup system. I use OneDrive, you could use Google Drive, you could use uh, Amazon Web Storage, doesn't matter, there's hundreds of options, but just do something. It'll cost you a little bit, uh, depending on whether you have it already that you're using. It might have been, be an extra spend. I think it's worth it to have that cloud backup. It also means I have those video files on my desktop and I are also on my laptop. If I'm traveling, I can pull them up on my phone. If I'm out and about and I really need something, I can find it on my phone because it's all online on my private storage. The last thing I want to talk about is the legalities of this. You have to be careful and I want to make sure you're being respectful to the magicians who are doing this stuff. So here's the thing. Copyright law says you buy a DVD you have the right to make a personal copy of it. So you can either uh, make, a, make a duplicate DVD, if you're uh, you, uh, used to do that nowadays, you just make a, a digital file, and that's okay, that's covered by the law. However, you have to make sure your personal file lives and is bound to the real thing, right? You can't separate it, you can't make your personal copy and then sell or give away the original. Now you have an illegal copy because now two people have access. It's split, right? So you can't do that. You gotta be careful about that. If you make this digital copy of a DVD, you need to make sure you have the original on your shelf or in storage and you never get rid of it. Or option two is you make your digital copy and you destroy the original, which is what I do, because I don't want the stuff. I don't have, I don't want it on my shelf. I want the digital copy and that's all I need. So I now have to destroy, literally, take, I take the DVD and I crack it, I break it to make sure it can't turn up anywhere else, because I, I don't want to be responsible for that. I, I try my best to recycle the, the plastic cases, but the DVD itself, I just crack. That way, I'm making sure there's only one copy of that in existence. Of course, uh, with that digital copy, you can't share that either, right? You, gotta, you can't do that. Uh, make sure that the people who publish this DVD and, and Barry Richardson is getting rewarded for that copy. If you share it, 
the creator, the originator, the publisher is not getting any reward and it's stealing from them. So as, as a magic publisher and producer myself, I really encourage everyone to make sure they're uh, paying their respect and paying the dues to the people putting this stuff out and doing right by them, doing right by the magic community. So thank you very much for, for listening to that little, little sermon of mine. And I hope this is helpful for you to digitize your magic collection, make it more accessible, make it easier to watch your videos anywhere, anytime you want, and learn more magic. I'll see you next time on Tips and Tricks for Magicians. Bye-bye.